Hello, and welcome to Keith Wants Online Ministries. I just uh, thank the Lord for today, and thank the Lord for using Keith Watts Online Ministries. I ask you to pray for us, pray for me. When I say us, I'm talking about me and the Holy Spirit. <laughs> um, but anyway, I just ask you to pray for Keith Watts Online Ministries. Pray for our nation. I ask you to pray for the protection of President Trump and his family. And just pray for our nation. Um, and I ask you to pray for my wife, Jenny. She's having a test next Thursday at the hospital. I got to take her up there. And then also, uh, I'm praying that she won't have to, but she may have to have surgery on her right knee. And so I'm asking the Lord to please, please heal the knee and pray that you won't have to have any surgeries. And I just trust in the Lord that everything is going to be okay. Uh, but anyway, today's message, the title of it is Mankind is Going to Heaven His Own Way. We find it from the very first man that was born on the face of the earth, Cain. All the way through the ages, mankind today, men and women are and teenagers and those that are past the age of uh, innocence is trying to go to heaven their own way. And God is the only way. Jesus Christ is the only way. And uh, but we find that um We'll find out what happened. The, the verse, text verse is going to be what I'm preaching out of Genesis chapter 4, verses 1 through 10. Uh, so, but before I pray, just ask you to really pray for Keith Watts Online Ministries. It seems like so many things are happening around the world with this ministry, and it's so exciting what the Lord is doing and going to do with this ministry. And and this preacher, when I think about it, it really humbles me that the Lord is using me. Uh, it's just a blessing to my heart. And I have decided, uh, I told my mom yesterday, I'm going all out for the Lord the rest of my life. And, and, and I'm determined in my heart, and by the grace of God, uh, I'm going to do that through Jesus Christ. Uh, but anyway, um uh, but I'm next week, I'm going to be preaching. Uh, I'm going to go up to my home church, Newton Baptist Church, Monday night. and going to be recording a message for a Sunday night for my home church. And uh, the title of the message is, uh, Are You Burdened for Lost Souls? And then Tuesday or Thursday, I'm going to be preaching again the same message, Um um, some of it may be different. It depends on the Holy Spirit's leading. Uh, I'm going to be putting the message on my YouTube channel and Facebook pages. Um, and then the next week, I'm, I'm, the Lord's laying it on my heart about a message. Uh, I've been uh, praying about it and thinking about it this week. Uh, and the title of it may be, Preachers, Are You On Fire for the Lord? Uh, it just seems like there's so many uh, that are trying to make a name for themselves and bu building the ministry and building the YouTube channel and, and all of this. And we need to be concentrated on lost souls and, and having a burden for lost souls. And so, but anyway, let's go to the Lord in prayer. I want to want to get into the message. I have quite a bit to, to cover. Heavenly Father, Lord, I come to you right now and thank you for giving us another day. Thank you, Jesus, that you are in control. No matter how bad it gets around the world, it is so comforting to know that and to think on that and dwell on that. And Lord, I just thank you for the opportunity to preach and to preach your word, preach the truth. And Lord, I do come to you, pray for our nation, the United States of America. I do pray for our government officials. Lord, I just lift them up and pray for them. I pray for the protection of President Trump and his family. I pray, Lord, for my wife, Jenny, for the test this coming Thursday and for uh, her knee, that it will get better, Lord. I pray for that. I pray that my wife won't have to have surgery. I just lift the Watts family up to you and I pray for us. 
And Lord, I pray for this message. Oh, Heavenly Father, I pray for this message. And Lord, I pray, Lord, for the messages to come. Oh, Lord, I pray, Heavenly Father, I pray that you will win millions of souls across America and millions of souls around the world before the rapture of the church. I pray for this and agree upon this with everyone else that's saying this prayer around the world. We agree that this is going to happen. And Jesus said in Matthew chapter 18, verse 19, it shall be done for them. And oh, Lord, I pray that the harvest will come in of millions of souls before the rapture of the church. And I just pray that you'll bless this message. Pray the Holy Spirit, I'll get out of the way and the Holy Spirit will speak through me to the heart of the people. And I pray all of this in Jesus' precious and holy name. Amen. I preached on the message uh, last week um, about the fall of man. And um, I started out the message with Acts uh, chapter 8, verse 35, where the Ethiopian, the eunuch from Ethiopia, was reading Isaiah 53, 8. And Philip got up in that chariot and preached to the Ethiopian out of Isaiah 53, 8, Jesus. And that that is what it says in Acts chapter 8, verse 35. And, and so uh, that's what he was reading. And all through the Old Testament, you see Christ. You see Christ from Genesis chapter 1 all the way to Revelation chapter 22. Christ. And so we're going to preach Jesus Christ out of Genesis chapter 4, verses 1 through 10. Um, don't have time to look at 11 through 15. Uh, I may mention in, in passing it's where the curse came upon Cain for him killing his brother, but uh, we, so we find here mankind is going to heaven his own way, and it's that way today. Millions upon millions of millions of people is, and billions through the ages, is going to heaven their own way. I don't know why we, we people feel like that you can just change God and, and all, but we find, we will see that Cain wanted to get to heaven his own way. And I'm reminded of John chapter 14, verse 6, when Jesus said to Thomas, he said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Cain, you can't come to the Father but by me. Mankind, you can't come to the Father but by me. I am the way. I am the only way. There's only one way. All the other ways lead to hell. All the other ways lead to God not respecting the offer that you're bringing to the church for this sacrificial offer. And we will find that here in Genesis chapter 4, beginning in verse 1. And Adam knew Eve, his wife, and she conceived, and bare Cain, and said, I have gotten a man from the Lord. The, the name Cain means to get. She had gotten a man from the Lord and called his name Cain. And that is the meaning of his name in verse 2. And she again bare his brother Abel. And Abel was a keeper of the sheep, but Cain was a tiller of the ground. And I want to take a look a few minutes at, um, excuse me, at the meaning of Abel. The meaning of Abel is breath, vapor, because Abel didn't last very long on this earth. I, I don't know how old Abel was. These two men were grown. They were past teen years. They were past the responsibilities of being under their parents. And now they can make their own decisions. They both went to the house of God to worship God on their own. And so 20s or 30s, I don't know, 40s, however long it was, it wasn't very long. 
And and so Abel, the name Abel means breath, vapor. And we find when I was thinking about that, this verse came to my mind in James chapter 4, verse 14. James says, Whereas ye know not what shall be on the morrow. Abel did not know that day was his last day on the face of the earth. For what is your life? It is even a vapor that appeareth for a little while and then vanisheth away. You see that vapor coming out of the mist. It, it's Vapor means mist. and But steam coming up. And all of a sudden, it's gone. I mean, one second you see it, the next second it's gone. Vapor. And and we don't know what is holding for tomorrow. Who knows? The Lord may take me home today. You, you never know. And and so it's, it's just but a moment of time, a little speck. And so that's what his name meant. And we will find that, that he did, he, life is but a vapor. And, uh, you know, in and, and, and Job chapter 14, verse 1, man that is born of woman is a few days and full of trouble. What a description of mankind, uh, uh, an accurate description of mankind and our life here on this earth. And so we find the meaning of Abel meaning breath or vapor. And then verse 3, and in process of time, they grew up. They were born in, in uh, verse 1 and 2 and were babies and, grew, and were innocent. And then in process of time, they grew up. And then it came to pass. In verse 3, it came to pass. The, these four letter, four words. Uh, all through my life, I just keep thinking about these four words. You may be going through uh, a mountaintop and you're up, up way up there. Like right now, I'm on a mountaintop. I get to preach the word of God. And about 10 minutes after I preach, I'm just, Ugh. and uh, it's just amazing the up and downs of preaching. But you you are up on the mountaintop and things are going good. It shall come to pass. Because that's how life is. Job chapter 14, verse 1. But, and then, but you know what? You're maybe in the valley. And boy, here comes a mountaintop. So in that valley, it'll come to pass. And what a wonderful thing that is and all. But I got to thinking the other day when I was going over this message three or four days ago, uh, three or four days ago, I, I got to thinking about this. What will come to pass? And this was my first thought. The earth as we know it will come to pass. All that's being built, all that's that all that you see on the face of the earth, the Grand Canyon, the seas, the islands, the, the beautiful sights all over the world. I find it amazing. I was thinking about this earlier when I was going over the message. Can you imagine? God created this world through judgment through a flood and it's so beautiful and so wonderful and i was thinking earlier about the new heaven and then the new earth well so we know that this old earth as we know it is going to come to pass in revelation chapter 21 verse 1 john says and i saw a new heaven and a new earth and he said in that verse there is no more sea on the new heaven and the new earth and so why in the world are you trying to build your kingdom on this earth? We owe this house. We own this house, my wife and I, but we really don't. We're just stewards. There's nothing on the face of the earth that none of us, that any of us own. And, and every bit, this house is going to burn up. Everything's going to burn up on the face of the earth. God may put a meteor by it, or, or I don't know how he's going to do it. All he's got to do is call fire down. Fire could come down and burn it up and purify it. That's what's going to happen. And I was thinking about this earlier when I was going over the message. What What is the new heaven and the new earth going to look like? It's going to be so unbelievable. Oh, it's going to be so unbelievable. 
I, and I just started imagining about it and just can't even come close to thinking. But in God is going to speak it into being, <laughs> just like he did this earth. And we're going to be there. <laughs> I want to see it. I can't wait to see it. That's going to be amazing. And what it's going to be like there. But what will come to pass, the second thing is this life as we know it, it's going to come to pass for every one of us. And for a lot of us, especially for the born again Christians here, we're real, real, real soon. You're no longer going to have the title that you have in your name. You're no longer going to have your possessions. You, whatever you're in love with, whoever you're, you are in love with, with yourself or someone else or your career. So many people are so in love with their career and their position and their possessions and they're so in love with the money in their accounts and they're trying every day to keep building it and building it while orphanages around the world are starving to death oh if you got money start helping orphanages i'm having more and more preachers and pastors around the world asking me please help support us please find someone to help support us uh, so many and it's absolutely breaking my heart and just keep praying for them. But here, what is, and then here's this one. What will not pass? Oh, what a wonderful list this is, except for one. But on this list, it's so wonderful. The first one I was, got to thinking about was the new heaven and new earth. <laughs> it's not going to come to pass. It's going to be forever. The new heaven and the new earth that has no sea. It will never come to pass. What else will not come to pass? God's word. God's word is everlasting. It will never come to pass. It will never end God's word. So comforting. And the living word, Jesus Christ, one of his names is the word. John chapter 1. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. And same, you know, I, I love those verses in John chapter 1. And then we find heaven, the third heaven where God's home is. It will never come to pass. It will never end. It will never be destroyed. And then eternity itself will never end. And I was thinking about this earlier. God measures time in eternity far different than how we measure time on this earth for God 1,000 years of our time is one day and one day is a thousand years that's what the Word of God says and it is never ending and hell will be cast into the lake of fire in uh, Revelation 20 I believe verse 15 death and hell were cast into the lake of fire this is the second death and it never ends. It will not come to pass. And how sad that is. I always keep thinking trillions of years from now, our relatives will be burning in hell. It will never end. And then we find in verse 3, the last part of verse 3, And Cain brought of the fruit of the ground an offering unto the Lord. Cain, the, my first thought of this, the fruit of the ground, my first thought was good works, equals good works. I wrote that down. And Ephesians 2, 8, 9, for by grace are you saved through faith in that not of yourself. It is a gift of God, not of works. Cain toiled, sweated, uh, paid for it. He, he paid it for it with his sweat and blood and tears tilling that ground and working and working and working. And I guarantee you, he got the very best. And he thought in his heart that God would accept it. Look, God, look what I did for you. But we will find that he didn't accept it. What was wrong with Cain's offering? You can't get blood out of a turnip. You can't get blood out of the fruit of the ground. And this was an offering for the sacrificial offering for their sins, looking forward to four, nearly 4,000 years later when the Lamb of God would be born of a virgin and die on the cross for Cain's sins. He died on the cross for Cain's sins. 
But Cain did not accept it. Cain wanted to go to heaven his own way. Cain wanted to go to God his own way. And so we find that what was wrong with his offering? No blood. I find here at the end, an offering unto the Lord. Cain went to the house of God. Cain was searching for God. Cain was searching for religion, but it was a Christless religion where most people have today and so sleep in their religion and think they're okay with God. Cain thought he was okay with God, but Cain had religion and Cain knew what to bring. Cain and Abel knew what to bring to the altar of God for sacrifice, Adam told him. And one listened and one didn't. Cain easily could have uh, bought a spotless lamb from his brother and bring the right one, but he decided to go his own way. And mankind is made to worship. Man will worship something or someone. For most that has ever lived, most of them worship themselves or a person, husband, wife, position. I was talking about this earlier when it's going to pass. Everything's going to pass. Uh, some worship titles. <laughs> I'm over all of you. <laughs> uh, it's just unbelievable. And when you die, you no longer take, carry that title. You, uh, yeah, Naked came I into this world and naked shall I return. That's what Job said. Uh, and then in verse four, and Abel, he also brought of the firstlings of his flock and of the fat thereof. And we find, you know, in Numbers chapter 18, verse 17, Leviticus chapter three, verse 26, I mean, 16. And the Bible, all through the Bible, all through the Old Testament, the Levitical law, all through them. God told Moses, hey, this is how it's going to be. And and it's never changed. It never will change. And then, uh, so we find here, what was right with Abel's offering? You can get blood out, out of a lamb. You can get blood out of his firstborn. And we also find Jesus, firstborn of Mary. In uh, Luke chapter 2, Verse seven, and she brought forth her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling clothes. He is the firstborn of God Almighty. He is the only born of God Almighty. That makes him the firstborn. And all through the ages, the firstborn, uh, the Passover, all the firstborn died from Pharaoh all the way to the servants, all the way to the beggar died. Why? Because the blood was not applied to the family, like it was to every family in the nation of Israel. And it's the same today. And it's the same here with Cain and Abel, the first two men to ever be born on the face of the earth. And it's never changed and it never will. And mankind keeps trying to change it and change it. And it's not going to happen. All the Old Testament saints look forward to Christ, Cain and Abel, this was 4,000 years earlier, less than 4,000 years, when Christ was offered up the sacrificial lamb, the blood was shed, and it's not going to change, never will. And then we find in, um, uh, and the Lord had respect unto Abel and to his offering. Unto Abel and his offering, he had respect. And listen to this in uh, Hebrews chapter 11, verse, verse 4. By faith, Abel offered unto God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain, by which he obtained witness that he was righteous. You can only get righteousness from God. Righteousness does not come within man. There was nothing righteous about Cain. God testifying of his gift, and by it, he being dead, yet speaketh. Abel's blood was spilled in the ground, and his blood was crying out to God, still is today, for justice. 
And so we find that Abel, by faith, brought the more excellent sacrifice than Cain. Why? He listened to God. He listened to his father and said, you know what? I choose Christ. I choose the right way. I repent of the direction I'm going. Get my heart and life to Jesus Christ. Here is the first of my firstlings of the flock and the fat thereof. And God gave respect to Abel. And then verse 5, we see the response of Cain's from God. But unto Cain and to his offering, he had not respect. And what was the response? And Cain was very wroth, angry, and his countenance fell. He was so furious with God Almighty. How in the world can you reject my offering? I worked hard for this. I sweated with this with tears and sweat. And I worked really hard. And out of all of this fruit of the, of the ground, I gave you the very best. But it was not good enough. You can't get blood out of it. You can't have that sacrificial blood to take care of your sins. His, his own works was not going to take care of his sins. It has to be the shedding of innocent blood. And that is Jesus Christ. And so Cain, what had God had no respect to Cain and to his offering. The Lord said unto him, Why art thou wrath? wrath rather? In verse 6, and, God, and Cain and the Lord said unto Cain, Why art thou wroth? Why art thou angry? And why is thy countenance faileth, fallen? What a question. He responded to Cain. And then in verse 7, the love of God for Cain came out. It is so amazing the response that God had to Cain. What Cain did was absolutely so disrespectful to God, and he did not honor God, and God showed his love to Cain in verse 7. If thou doest well, shalt thou not be accepted? And if thou doest not well, sin lieth at the door. And unto thee shall be his desire, and thou shalt rule over him. He gave him a way out. He gave him a chance. And, and I find it amazing, the, the statement, and if thou doest not well, sin lieth at the door. And it was there. And Cain opened up that door and sin came in all over him. And sin will come into you. The test, the, the, the uh, temptation is there. And sin lieth at the door. And temptation is there. And if you say yes, you're opening your door wide open for sin and all the consequences and everything else after it. And that's what Cain did here. And, and God warned him and God told him, sin is lying at the door. The murder of sin is at your door. And if you don't keep that door shut, you are going to murder your brother. But Cain would not listen. Because he knew what he was doing. And he wanted to go his own way. And then in verse 8. We find the first murder. Ever to be committed. And Cain talked with Abel his brother. He talked about it, to him about what happened. At the house of God. And how God rejected his offering. And it came to pass. What happened. He got angry. And started hating his brother so much. When there were in the field, they're looking around. Cain is looking around and no one's around to see his brothers and sisters younger than them and his mom and dad and no one was around. And he had the opportunity, he was alone. And that Cain rose up against Abel, his brother, and slew him. He killed him out in the field and buried him. Why? Hiding his sin. He thought no one knew. He thought no one found out, but God always finds out. God is all-knowing, all-powerful, and all-present, and he knows everything that, is, that happens. And so Cain made the wrong choice from verse 7. He made the wrong choice. He rejected God's love. 
He rejected God's grace. He rejected God's mercy. He rejected God's only begotten son. He rejected the sacrificial lamb of God Almighty and wanted to go his own way. And so we find here in verse 8, the first murder. And so I was thinking about this the other day, the religious crowd. Here is a religious man trying to seek God and go to God. He went to the house of God, but he was his religion was his own. And he looks at Abel and looks at the follower of Jesus Christ, Abel. And he, what does he do? He slays him. He kills him. And all through the ages that has happened. And it's happening more and more today. It's amazing the messages that I'm getting from around the world. And it's amazing what's going on in, a, in America. We're, I mean, a few steps away from full-fledged persecution of the church. The church, persecution of the church already started last March in the pandemic. And it's going around everywhere. Pastor yesterday in Africa in one of the nations told me, Brother Keith, the government told us we have to go from 150 at church to 50. Then what's next to 25? Then what's next to zero? And that's the way it's going to be here. That's, it started happening. Government officials in so many of the states are trying their best to keep the doors totally shut and make it illegal. Why? Because they are followers of Cain. They got their own religion. They're going to God their own way. And then we find in 1 John chapter 3, verse 13, Marvel not, my brethren, if the world hates you. Don't be surprised if the world hates you. The world hated Jesus. There's no difference today. And if you don't have any opposition of the world and the world loves you, you might want to take a look at your religion and see if you do have Christ as your religion. Christ. Or you preaching the true word of God. You, If you tickle their ears, you're not going to have any opposition. No one's going to try to kill you because you're tickling their ears. But if you cut at their heart, boy, I tell you, they will kill you. I tell you, as a preacher in uh, Pakistan, three or four months ago, the neighbor tried to shoot and kill him, and he and he didn't kill him. He wants God wants him to keep preaching. Uh, but persecution is growing everywhere, and uh, we find the response of Abel, Cain, in verse nine. And the Lord said unto Cain, Where is Abel thy brother? And he said, I know not. Am I my brother's keeper? We find that God's response in verse 9 and to all the way to 15 is totally different than the response in verse 7. No longer grace. No longer mercy. No longer you can accept Jesus Christ as your Savior. You have passed the point of no return. The Holy Spirit is no longer dealing with you. There is no longer a way to heaven for you. Your way is to hell, and you are cursed from Jesus Christ. And so that is what happened. But I find it interesting. What was Abel's, was Cain's response? Oh, I'm going to repent. No. He said, I don't know where my brother is. He lied to God. And then he disrespected. Am I my brother's keeper? So disrespect. Absolutely no fear for God Almighty. And that's the way it is today. All over the world, all these ungodly people have absolutely no fear of God Almighty. And he is still all powerful. It is a fearful thing to fall into the hands of a living God. In Hebrews chapter 10, verse 27, I believe. And and no fear. And that's the way it was with Cain. And then in verse uh, uh, 1 John. I just, I just want to read this real quick. Running out of time. 1 John chapter 3, verse 12. Why did he respond that way? Listen to this. Not as Cain, who was of that wicked one, and slew his brother, and wherefore, I mean, and, and wherefore slew him, because his own works were evil, and his brother's righteous. 
His brother Abel's was righteous, and his was wicked. And he became jealous and slew his brother. And envious of his brother, brother's relationship with God Almighty. And then in verse 10, in closing, and he said, What hast thou done? The voice of thy brother's blood crieth unto me from the ground. I was thinking about this yesterday and this morning. All these millions and murders all through the ages still crying to God. All the prophets that were slain. Jesus talked about them quite a bit. You have slain the prophets from Abel all the way to Zechariah behind the, in between the porch and, and the entrance of the gate, I believe. And you've slain them. And uh, in closing, Hebrews chapter 12. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 24. And to Jesus, the mediator of the new covenant, the mediator, the go-between, between, between me and, and God is Jesus Christ. And in 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 5, for there is one mediator between God and men, the man, Christ Jesus. Why? Why is he the go-between? He's the sacrificial lamb. He's the only one that God will respect your offering to God. God is, God is no respecter of persons, but the offering that you bring, we find that he disrespected, he did no respect toward Cain and towards his offering. Why? Because he wasn't going through the blood of Jesus Christ. What about you? Have you received Jesus Christ as your savior? Are you still going to church with the wrong offering? Are you still trying to get to God your own way? The Bible says that the devil blinds the hearts of men. I keep praying that the Lord will open up the hearts of these men and women. I'm still dealing with false preachers and false teachers. I led six false ministers to the Lord in Pakistan. And I'm still dealing with so many more and, and don't have time to deal with so many. But I'm asking you. Have you received Jesus Christ as your Savior? When is there going to come a time where you will stop and say, Jesus, come into my heart and save me. I repent of my sins. I repent and turn to you. I believe that Jesus Christ died on the cross and rose again the third day. The Bible says if you say this with a mouth and give your heart to Jesus, that you will become righteous in God's eyes. And I pray that you will do that before it's eternally too late. You have a good day. Bye-bye.